iOS 14, the iPhone's next big update, is nearly here. The public beta isn't available quite yet, but the developer beta is, and we've gone hands-on with it to show off the biggest features. First up are widgets. While iOS has had widgets for a while now, they were very limiting and not very pretty. That changes in iOS 14. Now, widgets can be placed anywhere, even on home screens. They're available in a variety of sizes, stackable, and can be easily dragged and dropped anywhere. When you move them around, all other icons jump out of the way. There are only a handful of widgets in the beta for system apps, but we're excited to see how pretty widgets from third-party devs look when those finally come out. Next up, App Library. This is how you'll search through all of your apps in iOS going forward. Your iPhone automatically groups similar apps together, and you can either launch a few standouts from this menu or tap into the collection, where you can explore them all. You can also search by app title. It's a bit overwhelming at first, but you get the hang of it. Picture in Picture finally arrives with iOS 14 and it's easy to use. The window automatically pops up when you leave an app that's playing video and can easily be moved around the screen or tucked away into a corner when you don't want to actually see it, but still want to hear audio. The window can be resized using Pinch and Expand as well. The only problem right now is that Picture in Picture doesn't work in most apps. In fact, it's not functioning in YouTube or Safari yet, and so the only place I could try it out for the purposes of this demo was Apple TV+. iOS 14 adds really useful translation tools. First, there's a new Translate app, which at launch will be able to translate between 11 different languages and can work entirely on device without the need for internet. The app has some useful features, like a side-by-side -side conversation view that's helpful when you're speaking to someone in a different language in real time. And the app can even tell what language is being spoken simply by listening broadly. Translation also arrives in Safari and is accessible through the pop-out menu at the top left. It works fast and smoothly, though it doesn't support many languages quite yet. Spanish language sites are fair game in my experience, though Japanese ones couldn't be translated yet. Siri has a useful new interface in iOS 14 that slims Apple's Assistant down so it doesn't obscure your view in whatever app you're using. The Siri button lives at the bottom when the Assistant is summoned, and prompts and responses fall from the top, like notifications. Siri can also send audio messages too, which supplements long-time features like the ability to dictate messages. That should be pretty handy if you'd rather just send something in your voice, as opposed to having Siri transcribe your words for you. From cycling directions and EV information and maps, to app clips, which are kind of like snippets of apps you can access using QR codes to pay for parking or do other simple tasks, iOS 14 has a ton of other new useful features that aren't quite working yet in the beta. Other upgrades include spatial audio enhancements while listening to AirPods, the ability to set default browser and email apps, the ability to use your iPhone as a digital car key for supported vehicles like the new BMW 5 series, and the redesigned sleep tracking experience in the health app. iOS 14 is shaping up to be the biggest iOS update in a very, very long time, possibly since the massive redesign seven years ago. And we can't wait until everyone gets a chance to take advantage of these new features. Follow Tom's Guide over the next several months as new features are launched and the final update finally starts rolling out to users in the fall. For Tom's Guide, I'm Adam Ismail.